large part of the southern region of the North American continent lies within the country known as Mexico. With a land area of nearly 800,000 square miles, Mexico has a wide variance in climate. The land rises from the tropical regions at sea level to the temperate climate of the central plateau and upward to icy peaks that tower more than 18,000 feet above the sea. The coastal plain, broad, flat acres of fertile earth bordering the Pacific Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico, are known as the Tierra Caliente, or hot land. This area has a warm, humid climate and a heavy annual rainfall. The warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico contain a great variety and abundance of sea life. Along the wide beaches, the fishermen ply their ancient trade, using great hand nets to haul in a harvest from the sea. Their nets bring in all kinds and sizes of fish. These will be sorted, cleaned, and shipped to market. The fishermen and their families live in primitive houses thatched with palm fronds. They enjoy a friendly climate where houses of wood or stone are not needed for comfort. In the lagoons near the sea, the fishermen work with nets. These men have chosen a spot where the fish are known to feed. After the net has been lowered into the water, the fishermen spread it out in a large circle. Then it is hauled in slowly until the fish are forced into a small pocket where they can be scooped up. In the larger towns along the coast, such as the Gulf Port of Veracruz, fishing is done with modern methods. Here, motor launches are used to fish far out at sea, the men using both lines and nets. Barracuda, Bonita, Pompano, and other warm water fish are found here in abundance. Most of the fresh fish sold in the markets of Mexico City is shipped by rail or truck from Veracruz. The coconut palm is found in tropical coastlands in many parts of the world and has many uses for the people who live in these areas. It provides them with both food and drink and with palm leaves for building their homes. Grow in clusters among the fronds and are harvested when they are still green at this plantation, a new method is used. A knife with a handle 60 feet long is operated by a man on the ground. The sharp blade slices through the stems and the coconuts fall to the earth. The coconuts are loaded into high-wheeled ox carts and taken to the drying platform. The green nuts are unloaded in a sunny place where they are left to dry. Using axes, the men split open the hard shells. The sun must dry the pulp inside the nut before it can be removed. When sufficiently dry, the meat of the coconut is cut out with a sharp knife. After it is thoroughly dried, the meat, now called copra, is raked together and put into bags. When it has been packed into large burlap bags, the dried heart of the coconut, or copra, is ready to be shipped to market. An important crop grown in the coastal regions of tropical Mexico is the banana. This root is harvested green, for the banana ripens very rapidly in the heat. Burros carry the stems of bananas from the grove to a shipping shed. From this point, trucks will take the bananas to Veracruz or Mexico City. Another and very important product of the Gulf Coast of Mexico is oil, which was discovered here early in the present century. The first wells were drilled near Tampico. Soon afterwards, other rich oil deposits were found in many places, some as far south as Puerto Mexico. Today, the petroleum industry is a major part of the country's economy, and Mexico exports large quantities of oil to other parts of the world. The middle, or subtropical zone, is a vast area starting at about 1,500 feet altitude and rising in a steep ascent to the central plateau. It has a relatively cool climate, rich soil, and enough rain to permit the growing of a large variety of subtropical crops. 
Where green hills rise from the hot coastal plain to form this rich middle zone, the mighty peak of Orizaba, crowned with perpetual snow, dominates the skyline. The principal crop grown in this region is sugarcane. During spring and early summer, the patient oxen slowly plod back and forth across the fields. This type of wooden plow has been used in many parts of Mexico since the arrival of the Spaniards in the New World. Corn is the staple food of the people and is grown practically everywhere in Mexico. In the fertile valleys of the middle zone, corn and sugar cane, like the thatched huts of the coastal zone, most of the houses in this region are of adobe with roofs of tile. In some areas, the cane fields are burned over before cutting, but here the men are cutting cane that has not been burned, a cleaner but harder task. Dominating the green landscape are the tall chimneys of the sugar mills, where the ripe cane is brought to be crushed. Mount Orizaba stands serenely against the sky. The cut cane is gathered into heavy bundles and piled high on the ox carts for transportation to the mill, which is often several miles from the field. From early morning until darkness, the oxen pull heavy loads from the fields to the mills, where they line up to await their turn to unload. The oxen wear harnesses of strong woven rope with a headgear that puts the strain of pulling upon their powerful necks and shoulders. The bundles of cane are unloaded with the use of strong chain slings operated by a hoist that empties each cart in a single operation. Trucks are being used in increasing numbers to haul the cane to the mills from the more distant fields. An endless belt carries the cane into the mill where huge crushers will squeeze out the juice for refining into various grades of sugar. Another very important crop of the subtropic zone is coffee. Harvesting the coffee berry is a tedious job. The pickers must go from one bush to another seeking the ripe fruit. Mexican coffee is a high grade variety used in making the finest blends. The large farms in Mexico are known as haciendas. Most of the farmers that grow coffee have their own mills for separating the outer husks from the berries. Burros, or mules, are generally used to bring the sacks of berries to the mills. The harvested berries look like cranberries or ripe cherries. The mill removes the husks from the berries and the inside kernels, or coffee beans, are then fed into a cement tank where the juice drains off before the beans are taken to a platform for drying. The beans are shoveled into wooden boxes and carried to the smoothly surfaced platform near the hacienda house. Here they are spread out to dry in the sun. When the beans seem completely dry, an expert examines them to make sure they are ready for shipping. Using a board attached to a long handle, the men collect the dried coffee beans into a pile for sacking. These sacks of coffee beans will be taken to the market center where they will be graded for export. Rice is another crop that is grown in some parts of the subtropic or middle zone. Rice must be grown in shallow water and during the growing season, men wade through the rice fields or paddies to remove weeds and keep the life-giving water flowing through the channels that irrigate the grain. From the time of planting until the harvest, the roots of the plants are kept submerged. Rice must be harvested by hand because machinery cannot be hauled through the swampy ground. The rice is threshed as it is cut by flailing the stalks across the edge of a heavy metal tub in which the grains collect. The rice must be spread out and thoroughly dried before it can be sacked and shipped to market. The central plateau begins at an altitude between three and 4,000 feet, with valleys and tablelands averaging between five and 7,000 feet. It has a temperate climate, ranging from cool in winter to warm in summer, and has wet and dry seasons. 
In the temperate climate of the Central Plateau, there are large dairy farms which supply nearby Mexico City with milk and cream. The dairy cattle are generally Holstein or Guernsey, and on this modern farm, there are more than 60 milk cows. While the cows are at the water reservoir to drink, the farm hands clean them with special brushes. Using a tractor in the place of oxen, these men are fertilizing the fields for the spring plowing. Throughout rural Mexico, the burro and the ox are still a common sight in the fields. On the larger farms, however, the tractor is playing an increasing role in bringing modern methods to agriculture. The small farmer still harvests his corn by hand, but on this farm, the very latest machinery saves countless hours of labor. Here, corn stalks are being chopped by machines to provide feed for the cattle during the winter months. When the corn stack is completed, a cross is cut into one end to express the gratitude of the farmers for a good harvest. In many widely separated areas of the central plateau, mining towns hum with activity. Mexico ranks high among the nations of the world in the production of silver, gold, lead, zinc, copper, antimony, iron, mercury, and tin. The chief mineral zone of Mexico averages about 50 miles in width and extends along the central plateau for almost the entire length of the country. The shaft below these hoists connects all the mine tunnels in this district. 5,000 tons of ore are processed daily in this big reduction plant on the hillside. Much of this production is exported to the United States. Near the town of Pachuca, silver has been mined since 1534, and today its mines and ore reduction plants are run on completely modern lines. In this factory, the huge Industria Electrica, the latest in electric refrigerators are being mass produced, along with stoves, heaters, toasters, and many other items of electrical equipment. In increasing numbers, the farmer of yesterday is becoming the factory worker of today, providing with his labor a better standard of living for all the people of Mexico. More than 2,000 workers are employed in this modern factory, one of the many new manufacturing plants that are being built in the suburban industrial area of Mexico City. It is a far cry from the ox cart to the gasoline or diesel truck. But as new roads are built, fast motor transport is able to serve the more remote sections of the country. This increased demand for trucks buses and automobiles is being supplied by American manufacturers who have built large assembly plants in Mexico. These new factories are training the skilled workers who are playing such an important role in Mexico's transition from an agricultural to an industrial economy. The government-owned Petróleos Mexicanos has built several new refineries to handle the output of the expanding oil fields. This one, near Mexico City, will refine gasoline, kerosene, and fuel oil. New stores and office buildings, such as this one for Petróleos Mexicanos, are being constructed in the larger cities. Slowly but surely, the burro is being replaced by the tractor and the ox cart by the motor truck. This exhibit of heavy machinery is symbolic of the changes that are taking place in Mexico. A free and progressive private enterprise using modern technology and an enlightened government